how's everybody doing? Hope you're having a good weekend or had a good weekend. Ryan and I are currently putting bales out for the cows. It's really uneventful. I'm just about done. We got all the corn fodder put out and he's got a few more hay bales to put out. Um, it's good quality hay. I mean, this is all the hay that I pulled out of the shed the other day. But it's, what is it? I think we're at right around 32. No, take that back. We're at 44 right now. 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, we're about the middle of March. So the weather swings like that are going to start being pretty common. Um, things on the farm, for us anyway, are really fixing to cut loose any day now. Um, what is it, the second week of March? The daylight savings time is just about to happen. Happened tonight. Um, yeah, and um, quite honestly, the third week, fourth week of March, weather permitting, um, if some of the snow will kind of melt off again and the mud could dry up, uh, we'll start checking fence, getting the fences fixed, all the pastures ready to go. Uh, without the intention of putting the cows out for probably another month and a half, but uh, myself, I like getting all the fences done in a timely, timely fashion. That guy makes a lot of noise. Uh, for the simple fact of when we get done with planting, it's nice to be able to just let the cows out. Uh, when you check fences before everything greens up and the brush starts growing and you gotta worry about leaves and everything blocking your sights, it's easier to check fences now than it is in May. Uh, and last year, uh, we were checking fence. We had one pasture that we didn't get done until June just how it worked out but this year <clears throat> all things considered um, like I've been doing the last few years since I got out of college I like to try to get fences done early um, you can see actually check fences from a farther way as opposed to having to get right up to them um, to see through any brush or anything but when I was growing up in high school and everything like that it would be like late April like right up to when we wanted to start planting and honestly it's I remember a few times where we were checking them on rainy days where we would have been planting if it, we didn't get rained out of the field which makes for a muddy mess too because then you're just slopping around in the mud in the trees woods brush trying to trying to follow fence rows fence rows um yeah to be fair we don't have a as many head of cattle as we used to um, when we had grandpa's cattle around but we are growing um, steadily this fall I paid off a bunch of my machinery last year you guys most of you are probably aware of that yeah I know um, my herd is the, is the smallest out of all three of ours um, this fall I would really like to be able to shake some cash loose and buy a bunch of heifers as opposed to buying finished cows or cows that are ready to start having calves um, for the simple fact of at the time I haven't checked any the prices lately but I can buy five six hundred pound beef heifers for less than half the cost of a bred cow or a first calf heifer that's gonna start producing a calf right away uh, I'm looking for quantity as opposed to quality at that point. Quality being a cow that's going to drop a calf that year. Um, if I can buy the calves with money out of pocket where I don't have any obligations on any loans um, as far as borrowing the money to buy them, I can swing that a lot better. Um, it'll help me better off in the mid to long term um, if I could buy a, a few more calves that are ready to start or not ready to start, but are um, 500 pound feeders or so, and raise them up. Um, it'll give me a few more quantity wise when they start calving. Uh, myself, I'd like to get about 50 head. And there's a lot of different ways we could go as far as raising them. 
Um, as far as the pastures we have, if Dad, Ryan, and I start raising the number of cattle that we would like to raise, um, it's going to come down to a, a space issue. And you guys are probably aware of the fact that I want to put in a steer shed down at my place. That's ideally what I would like to do. And um, I'd probably end up looking at it. If I had 50 head of cattle, I'd probably end up having to feed them year round and not putting them out on pasture. Um, there's going to have to be a cost reward thing going on there as far as how uh, what's the best way to do it. But I'm not there yet anyway. All I know is I have a set goal in mind. Um, I do definitely want to start raising a beef herd again. I'm um, it's just purely getting there. I went from two calves going into 2017. I had two cows, not calves. I had two cows that were that were a breeding age, and I ended the year with uh, three total, two breeding cows, and I ended up having. Um, three heifer calves last year between trading dad and I end up buying one so I have three heifers or three heifers two cows and I won't have any calves this year unless I buy them because I held back my cows from getting bred because I want to breed them in June so they'll calve early 2019 um, that's what I used to do when I had calves back or had my beef herd back in uh, 2006 through 2012 and um, yeah I still kick myself for selling them but I can't help it oh, any of you ever look back and realize how many mistakes you made in over a set number of years and realize looking back knowing what you know now that if I'd have just done this or just done that that things would have been entirely different for you that's I do that periodically. It's kind of hard to avoid it. Uh, you can tell yourself all you want, and oh, you can't look back in the past, but it happens. You can't really avoid it. It's human nature. So, if I could go back and redo my early 20s or my early beginning years of farming, I'm with the knowledge I know now, I would probably be the equivalent to what I'll be when I'm in my mid 30s at this point in my life. So, you can always make better decisions. Um, I attribute it entirely to being young and stupid. It's, knowledge is power in farming, it really is. And unfortunately, some lessons you learn in farming in general, lessons that you learn the hard way. Um, no matter how many times your, any mentor tells you how to, what to do or what's the best way to do it, you're still going to stumble and fall and make mistakes as is life and I've had my own my fair share of hard knocks and I've learned from them and it's allowed me to make better calculated decisions going forward I was talking to Ryan brother Ryan just yesterday um, the problem is is going into 2018 there are no problems um, we're better off as a stand standing we're better off or I'm better off going into 2018 than I was in 2017 um, but the problem is there's still that worrying factor there because I'm not farming um, in the present I'm farming this year and I'm farming three years into the future I'm looking at how things could be changing as we go any potential outcomes that you need to plan for and uh, that's can be stressful at times but um, stress comes with farming so as does taxes <laughs> but um, all the best you can do is really just plan for it and be aware that different outcomes are very possible rockets in his element rockets sitting in the window watching the, the world go by He's all cleaned up. Brittany had him cleaned up the other day. He got a bath and uh, groomed and everything. And he's been a sucker for attention here. This morning we had him in the house and he was just bouncing around between all of us. He was just wanting attention. But, well, he's got two bales set out that I have to take net wrap off of. I hope you guys appreciated the 
long enough sit down and talk with me but I got a couple more videos uh, hopefully I can get to them this afternoon that you guys look forward to the first part of this week um, the 76 needs some work I finally got the part for that yesterday so oh well it's a pretty nice tractor to be honest with you I like it a lot so, I hope you guys enjoyed your weekend. I did. As I say, I'm looking forward to things warming up the way they have been. I mean, 40 degrees out. Um, the ground is muddy where there isn't any snow. Obviously, in 40 degree weather. That's going to happen, but the snow is kind of taking its time as far as melting off. And they are saying... I went and helped that guy over in Platteville this past... What, two days ago? Three, three days ago? And um, it was like high 20s when I helped him. The reason I know is because I was in an open station 4020 haul manure. But um, just a couple days later, and we're in the 40s already. And it's the reminders that spring is coming is here. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the time change. A lot of people I know don't like the turning the clocks ahead, but I absolutely love it. Is it's just uh, another indicator towards spring and usually when we get the turning of clocks ahead that's usually to me it's it gets me a little bit more ramped up for for starting to get ready for spring so hope everybody else is looking forward to spring too I'm a little bit better equipped going into into this year as far as doing videos for YouTube you guys are currently sitting on one of my many different GoPro gadgets <laughs> I got this right here. Not quite as built as heavy as the sand you guys are sitting on, but still pretty nice. It's got its uses. Um, probably gonna use it more for when I'm working in the shop because it's so like maneuverable and everything. But um, the stand you guys are on right now is built really heavy. It's that custom deluxe setup. And for what you guys aren't aware of, I ordered something else. Uh, my sponsor, um, really made it a big gesture this past week I mentioned it once before about something that is coming you guys really aren't gonna see it too much I'll probably do a video about it just praising my sponsor but um, it's gonna help with the production of my channel and um, it took a lot of stress off my shoulders by what it is because I don't have to allocate money towards it anymore so that really means a lot uh, don't ever think I don't appreciate anything you guys do as far as my sponsor helping me out like he is and I also appreciate all of my viewers because you guys are pretty awesome you guys are pretty respectful I appreciate that a lot I don't had some uh, internet what you call it's early on but skin's pretty thick and I really don't let it bother me but um, yeah YouTube's been pretty good to me so far. Hopefully it continues to do so because I'm not not necessarily out of the realm of possibility if it ever gets to a point where it's more of a hassle than what it's worth, which it is not right now, so I'm not about to just pull the plug on YouTube. Um, but I would pull the pin on YouTube if a day comes where um, the reward isn't justifying the cost the time costs and effort to, to carry this camera around with me every day so well I'm gonna go enjoy the Sun because the Sun's coming out and the clouds are clearing off and that's it take care take it easy keep in touch I'll talk to you guys tomorrow